You're listening to Procurement 6, the weekly podcast from the team at Art of Procurement that summarizes this week in procurement in just six short segments. Hi there. I'm Kelly Barner, Head of Content and Operations here at Art of Procurement. And today is Friday, June 16th, 2023. Six. This week's Procurement 6 is brought to you by Category Palooza, Art of Procurement's annual summer festival of category ideas and insights. Register now and join us on August 8th for category-specific strategies and approaches that will help you improve your performance and deliver value, not to mention set you and your team up for success in 2024. Five. In this week's episode of the Art of Procurement podcast, Philip Eidson interviewed Klaus Grunwald, Global Head Partner at Business SAP Intelligence Spend Solutions, and Connor Mullaney, Co-Founder and Brand Ambassador at Accelerated S2P. They sat down live at SAP Sapphire in Orlando to discuss the idea of business ecosystems and what they offer to mid-market companies. One of the most interesting exchanges in the interview was about how mid-market companies see themselves and how that perspective affects their approach to procurement. Let's listen. Now, Connor, you said, you made a reference to the fact that you see a lot of different, there's similarities, of course, in the way that mid-market organizations need to leverage procurement and procurement software, but there's also some differences as well. What are some of the differences that you typically observe from a challenge perspective and just from a a needs perspective for mid-market versus uh, some larger organizations. Sure. So Phil, firstly, uh, it's it's funny that, you know, if you ask a a company that we class as a mid-market, they would say technically true, but we are seen as a fast growing company. Mm -hmm. So they don't see themselves as a small, an SMB. Yeah. You know, you have your companies who are family owned, small, fine, but you know, what we're talking about is those companies with, in, the, in, in say, the U.S., 500 million plus yeah. turnover, but growing fast. So, so their, their challenges are, you know, growing pains. Um, they want to, to, you know, they're competing against the large multinationals um, on a shoestring budget. Yeah. Um, they're having to move fast. They're having, so they're, they're having the same issues um, with less people, you know, from labor shortages to inflation to supply chain issues mm. so very much similar but they're doing it with um i would say a skeleton group yeah so there's some of the challenges so and look the the, the companies i speak to and work with is they have the they, they see themselves as well you know they may be working on fine margins mm. so anything they do they really have to think through that could have a big impact on their business versus a multinational could do yeah. a project okay it doesn't go well and we park that we move on somewhere else so yeah the differences are, i think really the commitment to doing a project and to making sure it works yeah do you see that the business sorry go ahead Chris. Yeah, you say a very very important thing often people think mid-market is different to large enterprises yeah. no they have the same business processes like yeah. large, large enterprises yeah. maybe not to the extent that there's so much volume going over the business process no. but mid-market i think is even they even have more challenges, especially in times like this, because of cash. Large enterprises usually have cash and they can operate with their cash. The constraint for mid-market companies is the cash situation very often, yeah. which makes procurement mm-hmm. very important yeah. because that's where cash goes out of the house. And so this is what I see currently. Yes, same challenges from a, from a business process perspective, which also by software then makes, makes, uh, makes a good difference, but, but more challenges Maybe it's sometimes opportunities on the financial side. Very often I see that. And that's, that's a bit yeah. what, what you understand, what the partners understand better, because that's your daily business as well, because many of our ecosystem partners are also mid-market companies. Yeah. That's your daily, daily in and out, um, better, uh, brought and better. Connor's point about mid-market companies seeing themselves, not as small, but as fast growing, really captured my imagination. First of all, We should all define ourselves based on where we are going, not where we are today. But then we should allow those aspirations to affect how we work. In the case of mid-market companies, that means effective cash management, 
the ability to accommodate the unique localized nature of a business that may be geographically or functionally dispersed, and partnering with providers that understand day-to-day realities and who want to join them on their growth journey. To listen to the full episode, go to artofprocurement.com slash podcast or check out the link in today's show notes. Four. In this week's episode of the Dial P for Procurement podcast, I walked back through the Dove Real Beauty campaign as an example of how social messaging and brand value have evolved over the last 20 years. Originally begun in 2004, the campaign sought to establish the Dove brand and its products as being for real women, photographing realistic models from all races, age groups, and body types. It was revolutionary and received wide acclaim. Dove had surveyed more than 3,000 women in 10 different countries and found that only 2% of those women considered themselves beautiful. They set out to fix that and made real progress. Then in 2017, their next campaign released a set of bottles intended to represent, again, all body shapes, but this time they seemed to have missed the mark and they received more ridicule than recognition. The 2023 campaign was just released, and rather than making people think or cheer, or even point and laugh, it has caused anger. My question is whether Dove's campaign has gone off track, or whether consumers and society as a whole have changed becoming jaded as a result of years of heavy-handed social marketing from across the product spectrum. To listen to the whole episode, you can either visit the Art of Procurement website, subscribe to Dial P wherever you listen to podcasts, or subscribe to the Dial P for Procurement LinkedIn newsletter. This is Procurement 6 from Art of Procurement. To get notified every time an episode is published, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe. Three. This week on the blog, Philip Eidson wrote a post about increasing the resilience of our supply chains through better data. He shared a quote from a 2018 Harvard Business Review article that predicted supply chain functions were five to 10 years from extinction, set to be replaced by automation. The article read, quote, the trend is clear. Technology is replacing people in supply chain management and doing a better job. It's not hard to imagine a future in which automated processes, data governance, advanced analytics, sensors, robotics, artificial intelligence, and a continual learning loop will minimize the need for humans. Obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty, but that quote cracks me up. In the blog, Phil went on to talk about the reality that supply chain challenges have prevented takeover by automation, sharing a number of recommendations, such as prioritizing data quality, establishing data governance frameworks, and embracing continuous improvement and learning, with the goal, of course, being to allow procurement and supply chain to contribute more, not hasten their extinction. To read the article, you can use the link in today's show notes or visit artofprocurement.com. Two. In this past Tuesday's Wall Street Journal, there was an article titled, Companies Quiet Diversity and Sustainability Talk Amid Culture War Boycotts. It shared the fact that executive mentions of ESG, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, and sustainability on second quarter earnings calls are down 31% from the same period in 2022. That figure represents the largest year over year decline and the fifth consecutive quarter of year-over-year drops following a pickup in the discussions in 2020. While it seems like a very concerning trend, what we don't know for sure 
is whether companies are truly shifting their focus or whether they are simply adjusting their messaging in response to investor interest. Time will tell, but it is definitely a sign that C-level focus has shifted in a way that procurement teams should be aware of and respond to. One. Before I let you go, I want to remind you to join us on June 20th for an AOP live session with the team from Procure Analytics. They will provide attendees with advice for navigating the transition back to more centralized spending control in the wake of economic tightening. And they'll give us advice about how to do that without letting the pendulum swing too far and erase the gains procurement has made in value delivery and relationship building. I hope you will register to join us. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next Friday at 6 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time. If you've enjoyed this pod, help us grow and tell your peers to search for Procurement 6 wherever they get their podcasts.